Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet have officially been out for one month, ladies and gentlemen, and in this video, we're going to look through every single brand new Pokemon introduced in the Paldea region, and I am going to grade them on a scale of 1 to 10. What is up, everybody? My name is Talon Master J. I am a competitive Pokemon player here on YouTube. You guys have seen my Draft League battles. You guys have seen how I recommend a bunch of Draft League content creators, and I've done a couple of discussion videos in the past, ladies and gentlemen. But in this video, I want to talk about all the brand new Pokemon in the Paldea region. Because Scarlet and Violet, to me, minus the technical difficulties, probably are the best games in Pokemon history. Now, I know we go off with Pokemon Platinum, and we go off with Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, And it's nice to see the Unova games getting some love, finally. But in terms of the overall competitive atmosphere, I think these games are probably the best. But... Given the whole of the Paldea Pokedex, I, if I'm correct, there's only like 103 new Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to go through all 103 in this video today, and I am going to give you my thoughts on them, rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, and if you guys like this kind of content and you want to see more, leave a like on the video today, comment down below if you agree with my picks or if you disagree with my picks, and subscribe if you're new. We just passed 200 Talonites. A couple of weeks ago, I thank you guys so much for that. The new goal is 300, so if you like this stuff and you want to see more, let's get to 300 Talonites, ladies and gentlemen. And just for the heck of it, let's make a like goal on this one. Uh, I don't know, get 10. 10 likes is something that would be nice, if anything. But without further ado, let's get into the Pokemon themselves, and let's start grading. First up is Sprigatito, ladies and gentlemen, and in all fairness, Sprigatito, when I saw it, it was the best starter Pokemon. I know people like Croco, uh, Boy Coco, I know people like Quaxley, but to me, Sprigatito was the best. 9 out of 10. It's Evolution Floor Gato. I know people hated the fact that it went bipedal, but I like the concept of it, that it's using the flower, and it's basically hiding its true colors when it gets to its evolution. It does get points docked because of the bipedal, but in terms of overall design, very good. 7 out of 10. The evolution, Meow Scarada, however, the final evolution, oh my god, this thing is insane. This thing is perfect. This is what, this is a better Delphox. And I'm sorry to the Delphox lovers, but Meow Scarada does it phenomenally. A magician with the flower that is floating because it's basically an illusion. Beautiful concept by Pokemon for this final evolution. Easily 10 out of 10. Foycoco, the fire starter, it's my second favorite starter. I will be honest here. I thought it was derpy. I thought it was, you know, eh, all right. Uh, but a crocodile, I wasn't really sure how they would work on it. I like that they broke from the original pack of the Chinese Zodiac for once. Maybe they go back in Gen 10, who knows. But for Foy Coco, like it, uh, give it a seven out of 10. It's Evolution Crocolore, however. I thought at first this thing was gonna be, this thing was absolutely dumb. I thought it was stupid when I first saw it. And then I looked deeper into it. And apparently what I thought was a ridiculous looking hat is a bird's egg in a nest. Pokemon, I'm glad to say you proved me wrong. Phenomenal design on it. 8 out of 10. The final evolution, Skeledurge, however, um, I mean, I like the fire ghost type on it. I like that it's got unaware as its hidden ability, which, you know, for some musicians, you have to be unaware of the surroundings, which is nice. Uh, fire ghost, good combination. I think it's only been used on Chandelure and the Hisuian uh, forms of Typhlosion. So that was a nice concept. And the signature move, Torch Song, I like the special attack boost. And it's nice to see the bird hatch. So same score as uh, Crocolore. It gets an 8 out of 10. Quaxley, however, this one was my least favorite starter. Of the three and normally i'm a water type starter ladies and gentlemen so i just could not gravitate towards quaxly at all i mean i get that it's a duck i get that 
it might have, it, they say it came from a distant land, so it's possible that it is a, you know, different form of maybe duck glitter or something like that, but in overall execution, I didn't really like it all that much, so sadly Quaxley gets a 6 out of 10. It's Evolution Quaxwell, however, oh my god, I don't think I have seen a worse middle stage evolution for a starter type in my life. And I saw Quilladin for crying out loud. This thing is horrible. Like, I don't understand it at all. It looks dumb. It looks ridiculous. Three out of ten. The final evolution, Quaquavel or Quaquavel, or however you pronounce it. At first, I also hated it. When I first saw it in my playthrough, which you could find on twitch.tv slash talonmasterj, I said, and I quote, It's a dancing peacock. And at first, I thought it was dumb. I really thought it was dumb. But as I've used it on the ladder, I am proud to say that I am wrong on this Pokemon. It is a good Pokemon. The design still gets a little bit of negativity for me because, again, a peacock from a duck, it doesn't really add up from the ornithology side of things. But I've, I've come to like it. 7 out of 10. Lechonk... When it first came out, ladies and gentlemen, let's be real. It was great. I love LeChomp. It is a stupid pig, but it's funny as hell. And also, it was funny that on Twitter, I saw it once, that somebody did for the wrestling company, All Elite Wrestling, LeChomp is hashtag All Elite. Because, yes, LeChomp is All Elite. 10 out of 10 for a Route 1 Pokemon. It's Evolution Oink alone, however... Definitely didn't see that one coming. I definitely didn't see it coming. Also didn't see that it would get a double form, in a sense. It's got a male form and a female form. So, it's nice that they have gender differences, but it really doesn't do much. I mean, it goes from a, from a cute round pig to just a bigger pig. So, honestly, it goes down to maybe like a 7 out of 10, but... I mean, it's there. It's something. So, yeah. Tarantula, at first, when I saw it, I mean, it was, okay, we got a spider Pokemon. That's great. We need more spider Pokemon. So, to find out that this Pokemon is actually a natural enemy of Scyther, that gave it bonus points. That that ball around its body prevents uh, Scyther's sights from being able to break it. Nice job, nice reference to an older Pokemon, and for a Route 1 bug, it's okay. 6 out of 10. It's Evolution Spydops, however. Ah, uh, I mean, a secret agent spider. Yeah, I understand that they were trying to maybe do a green Spider-Man reference here, uh, but it's not good, ladies and gentlemen. 4 out of 10. It's not a good evolution of the Tarantula at all. Nimble, however, I thought that this is a better Pokemon to be a Route 1 bug. It is a cute little grasshopper. We have been wanting a grasshopper. And they did a phenomenal job with Nimble. I love its design. I love its concept. I hate that it's one of those scared Pokemon. But at the same time, I can get used to it because it's really good and really cute. 8 out of 10. Low Kicks, however, blew me away. This thing is insane. Our first Bug Dark Pokemon, and it's basically a Butterfly Knife Grasshopper. Like, who would have thought that those two things would work together, and they did it phenomenally. Easily. 10 out of 10 design. Bravo on Low Kicks. Our next Pokemon is Palmy, and I'll be honest, when Nimona revealed that Pokemon... I thought that it wasn't going to be the Pikachu clone. I'm, I, I'll admit, I was wrong. I will admit that. But Palmy actually was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So I, I looked at it. I like its design. I like how it's a cute little mouse Pokemon. So I give it a 7 out of 10. Palmo, it's just a plump Palmy in a sense. The only thing that redeems it is that it becomes our first ever electric and fighting type, which 
In all fairness, Electivirus should have been, Zera Aura should have been, but we had this discussion with Luxray being Electric and Dark, and they made more P.E.K.K.A. the for first Electric Dark type. So, Palmo, I like its design. I get that it's a bigger Palmy. The Fighting type gives it a boost. 7 out of 10. Palmot, the final evolution, thing is very unique. I mean, again, a bigger Palmo, in a sense. And Revival Blessing, absolutely insane. I will just put it out there right now. Incredibly insane. One PP move, but it revives a Pokemon. Insane. Electric Fighting, really good. Has a signature move, Double Shock, which is essentially burn up, but for Electric types, like that. So, in all fairness, Palmot, I give it an 8 out of 10. It was really good in my playthrough. I'll say it right now. We have to go to the Paldean form of Wooper. We have to do it. I love this thing. It's insane. It really is. It is great. What a phenomenal design by Pokemon. And they took into the Jotonian version of Wooper. Because if you think about it, guys, it said it in the Jotonian Pokedex that it has a poisonous slime on its body. The fact that they actually took into that for regional form and made it like this... Insane. 10 out of 10. Claude Sire. <laughs> it's so derpy. It's great. I love Claude Sire. Poison and Ground. Not a bad combination in terms of type. Gets Water Absorb. Gets Unaware. I like the idea of the rib fish where it basically protrudes those spines, its ribs out of its body. Great Pokemon altogether. 9 out of 10. Tandemouse. Yeah. This is a Pokemon, apparently. <laughs> uh, didn't really see it coming, but I'll, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take a mouse or two. Six out of ten. Mouse hold. <laughs> the two became three, and the three maybe sometimes becomes four, and the four in its battle sometimes becomes five. Now we're six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten. Yes, it can hit ten times. But it's a mouse, a family of mice. Five out of ten. Fido, best puppy, best dog. Love this little guy. So cute, so adorable. Thought it was great. Ten out of ten. It's evolution, though. Dox Bunny. Just as good. If not better. I love this thing. It is a Dachshund. That is made of dough. And its signature ability gets boosts when it gets hit by a Fire-type attack. I love it. 10 out of 10. When Smollett got revealed, I'll say it straight up. I liked it. Thought it was okay. Uh... As a grass Pokemon, it was all right. But for the most part, I mean, an olive Pokemon, understandable. But I liked it. 7 out of 10. Dalav, I mean, I understand where they're coming from on it. But it doesn't really get to me. 5 out of 10. Our Believer, however, this is insane. It is literally a armor tree with an olive branch and it's a really good design i like it a lot eight out of ten squawkabilly in all fairness when i saw this pokemon it was a it was like eh, is this the regional bird i mean it might be and then it's got four forms and nothing really differs with them i think aside from ability I mean, it's an okay, it's not a bad design, but doesn't really go for me. 5 out of 10. Nackley. I'll be honest, when I first saw this Pokemon, I didn't know much about it. Thought it was okay. Not a bad design. I like the reference to salt. So, 8 out of 10. This is a Minecraft Pokemon. I can't say anything different about it. 
and I don't play Minecraft, but even I can tell that this is a Minecraft Pokemon. Five out of ten. It's evolu the final evolution Garganical, however, very much like. They use very good Pokemon, very underrated. Eight out of ten. I I don't even know what else to say about Annihilate that hasn't already been said, ladies and gentlemen. They took Primate, they killed Primate, and they somehow made Primate even better than it already wasn't. Ten out of ten. Great design. Great job, Pokemon. Great job. Sharkadet, when I first saw it, I thought it was cute. Really thought it was a great design. I like that it is basically a pre-evolution to Armor Rouge and Serral Edge, and they did a great job with it. 8 out of 10. Armor Rouge, I prefer more to Serral Edge, but that's because I played Scarlet, and I love this design. I love the cannon fire that it does. Easily a great Pokemon. 9 out of 10. Serral Edge... In terms of color scheme, like it better than Armor Rouge. In terms of overall competitiveness, prefer Armor Rouge to Serral Edge. In terms of the ability to get the Pokemon's item to evolve, prefer Armor Rouge. So Serral Edge, 8 out of 10. Tadbulb, didn't see this one coming. Honestly, was ridiculous at it. But it's cute. I get the idea, a, ta a floating tadpole... That is also a part light bulb, which is a nice design. 6 out of 10. Bella Bold, however, not a bad design. I like that it is, you know, a really good Pokemon. I still can't get a hold of the fact that the face on its body is the actual eyes. I still think that the eyes on the outside are its eyes. Um... And also, I kind of want to give it a little bit of negativity because of Iono, but in all fairness, Iono is one of my favorite characters in the game, so it redeems itself there. 7 out of 10. Watch Roll, when I first saw it, I thought it was cute. I really thought it was nice. And I guess apparently this is the regional bird, so to get it so late in the game is unique. But Electric and Flying, good typing. Very much enjoy it. 7 out of 10. Kilowattrel, they took the design and just pushed it up. Incredible design. Love the reference to Storm Petrol. 9 out of 10. Yeah, you're here. I don't know what to say about the Dunsparce that hasn't already been said, guys. Except, I'm going to shake the grain on this one. I like this design. 8 out of 10. Giraffarig... Finally got an evolution, and it's great. I love the fact that the tail is now a sort of like a mask in a sense. That And it's so much better now in the design. Love for Rigorath. I wish they maybe could have maybe changed it to maybe like Dark Psychic or something like that. But I understand, you know, keeping normal Psychic, which is alright. But 9 out of 10. Mastiff, I mean, I'll say it right now. They hit on all of the dog Pokemon, but this one is probably my least favorite because I'm not really a fan of the Mastiff breed of dog. But then again, I haven't really seen many Mastiffs, so that opinion could change down the line. But this one, 5 out of 10. Mabostiff, on the other hand, I was all prepared to give this thing like a, a 3 out of 10. I'll be honest, guys. I was about to give this a 3 out of 10. But if you played the story like I did, and you watched Arvin's story with his Mabostiff, if you did not shed at least one tear when his Mabostiff got back to full health, when it, start, when it started barking, when it was playing with its ball again, man, that hits home, yo. That hits home. This thing, I love it. 9 out of 10. Trudel, I mean, I think it's more of an unwarranted evolution. I think Grafii would have been fine just by itself. But, I mean, it's derpy. Four out of ten. Grafii, however, I like it. I really like this design a lot. Seven out of ten. I mean, I kind of have to talk about the Paldean form of Tauros, which is okay. I mean, it's not bad. But 
Could have been better. I mean, three forms is nice. But, I mean, they should have changed the shiny. And I say that as a person who's not really a shiny hunter. They could have done a better job with it. In terms of regular thing, 6 out of 10. The fire form, 7 out of 10. The water form, 5 out of 10. A tumbleweed Pokemon. Okay, they actually made a tumbleweed. And Bramblin is actually really cool. I like it. 8 out of 10. A bigger tumbleweed. A bigger one for an evolution. Also good. Like its ability. 8 out of 10. Tentacruel on the ground. And it runs. <laughs> I mean, it's got one of the... It's got one of the dumbest running motions ever, this thing. I mean, and you can see it in the background. It's running. 7 out of 10. Toad Scroll, not bad. I, I mean, I like it. Base 100, the Mycelium Might ability is okay. But being able to get past a certain ability, pretty good. 7 out of 10. Got to talk about Claw. Because a lot of people didn't really like it. And, in all fairness, I'm kind of one of them. I don't really get the point of this thing. And, while well, it's got a nice, you know, ability in a sense with Anger Shell, you gotta be below half for it to activate, and it's only half of a Shell Smash. So, it's nice, but the execution's bad. Four out of ten. Capsaicid? I'll be honest, I did not like how many were chasing me in my playthrough. But I get where they're coming from on it. I like the reference to the uh, the Scoville scale with it, be being that it's one of the spiciest Pokemon out there. 5 out of 10. The evolution, however, Scovillain. I mean, they gave us our first fire and grass type, guys. And they did a good job at it. If you ask me, they did a good job. I like it a lot. 8 out of 10. A Dung Beetle. And... Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about a Dung Beetle that hasn't already been said. Because... I don't like it. 2 out of 10. The Evolution, however... Didn't really think that a Dung Beetle would evolve into this thing. But I like Rabska a lot in terms of design. Especially when compared to its pre-evolution. 6 out of 10. Flittle... I mean, it, I'll be honest, I, I did not really see much about this Pokemon. But I understand it. I like it a lot. It's cute. 6 out of 10. Espathra, however... You would never think that Flittle would evolve from this thing. And in all fairness, Espathra is really good on the design. I like it a lot. And, I mean, an ostrich that's Cleopatra based. Pretty good. 8 out of 10. I love Tinka Tink. I really do. When I first heard that my Pokemon defeated one, I was like, it defeated a what? And then you find out that this is a fairy and steel type. Phenomenal. 7 out of 10. Its evolution gets a little bit better. I like how it becomes a little bit of a bigger uh, version of itself. Bigger hammer. Like the pigtail. 8 out of 10. Tink a ton, however. Oh my god, it's great. Love this thing. Love it so much. So good. Just hate the fact that as a Steel type, it goes after another Steel type in Corviknight. 8 out of 10. Wiglet. Huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wiglet. A big Diglet. With a W. Um, I wonder if Wiglet studied Wombology in college. Uh, I don't really know what to say about Wug Trio. Um, they basically just swapped the colors of Wiglet. 
Both of these Pokemon. Four out of ten. Bombardier? I'll be honest. Didn't think a Stork Pokemon would ever be gracing my presence. But they did a really good job at it. Dark type, however, for a Stork is... Honestly, kind of dark. No pun intended. But I understand it. I like it. Its hidden ability is really uh, a niche one. And they really hit on the design. 7 out of 10. They gave us a dolphin Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. And Finizen is adorable. What a perfect, perfect, perfect dolphin Pokemon. 10 out of 10. Powerfin. <laughs> what is there to say about this Pokemon except if you battle one and you let it switch out, run. Because this thing is broken. 9 out of 10. I will be honest. Varun didn't really see that coming. But it's a cute little engine. And it does a good job at it. 7 out of 10. Rev of Room, however, I mean, we saw it with the Starmobile for Team Star, and that's what gives it more points in my book. I mean, Rev of Room already by itself, Poison Steel, great use of the first ever combination, and then add on the Starmobile designs, 9 out of 10. Great design. I'll be honest, Cyclozar was okay. I like it, but, I mean, it's okay. Six out of ten. This thing is derpy. It's a worm, and somehow they managed to make it broken and competitive, in a sense, with a ability that doesn't allow it to get hit by ground-type Pokemon. So its only weaknesses are to fire and fight. Not bad. 7 out of 10. Glimmin, I really can't tell you much about because it's like, what really can I tell you about with it? Um, it's there. So, yeah. 6 out of 10. Why you're the champion's ace, I will never understand. I have a theory, but I just don't understand why. 5 out of 10. Griever, when we saw it, I thought it was adorable. Beautiful puppy. Thought it was great. Kind of felt sad that it basically kills people. Um, but it's so adorable, guys. It, they hit on all the puppies. 8 out of 10 on Griever. Houndstone, however... Woohoo! Didn't see this one coming, or at least the evolution design. Like it a lot. It gets dinged for one thing only. Why is it not Ghost and Rock? Because this thing has a damn tombstone sticking out of its head. Make that a rock type. You were able to make a Growlithe form part rock by saying its horn was made of rock even though it's very slim. Why not make a headstone rock? It gets dinged for that. 7 out of 10. I love this thing. I love Flamingo. I really do. I mean, name-wise, all they did was just take out the N in Flamingo, but it works better because it is a Flamingo that's your Amigo. And fighting and flying, great combination. The reference that it's a punching glove, really good design. And, I mean, just look at that beak. 8 out of 10. I, I mean, this thing is so cute. I love Satotl. If ever Satitan was going to get a free evolution, this is what you want for it. It's so cute. 9 out of 10. As for Satitan, 
It's got one of the longest cries in Pokemon, but it's kind of worth it. I like its design. I like its menacing stature. 9 out of 10. Bisharp's Evolution. It is really freaking cool. I think King Gambit is amazing. And that is not just because I love Steel types. This thing is awesome. What a design to evolve from a pawn to a bishop into a king. What next? I assume we're going to get Generation 10. Only female Bisharp can evolve into a queen? Oh, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? 9 out of 10. This thing is annoying in the water. I would just say it straight up. But in terms of its design, Veluza is really good. I like the design of a hockey. Or hake. I think that's how you pronounce it. But really good design. 7 out of 10 because of the fact that you are so annoying when you're in the wall. Oh my god, this thing is ridiculous. This thing is annoying in competitive Pokemon. But I, res I, I relate to it. I like it. 6 out of 10. We got a sushi Pokemon. <laughs> and the fact that it makes Don Dozo broken, I like it. I like this Pokemon a little bit better than Don Dozo, though, because of the water dragon typing. 7 out of 10. Great Tusk. I prefer more to Iron Treads. I will say that straight up. I love this prehistoric form of Dom Fan. 8 out of 10. They really didn't need to make a prehistoric Jigglypuff. But I understand where they're coming from on it. Give it a giant tail. But it really didn't need to be made. 5 out of 10. Amoongus? That is very vicious. I don't really know what else to say about it. 7 out of 10. You are broken beyond all belief if you get up with your special attack and your speed. You suck HP-wise and physical defense. One iron head and you are dead. But you are broken. Why they made Mischievous broken will be beyond me. But in terms of design, I like it. 8 out of 10. Slitherwing, probably my favorite of the past Paradox Pokemon. I like that they put Volcarona on the ground. I mean, it really works as a ground Pokemon. It basically acts as if Larvesta never grew wings to fly. I like it a lot. 9 out of 10. I get where people are coming from on why a Magneton is a past form. But we have to remember, guys, before the Steel-type was invented in Generation 2, Magnemite and Magneton were pure electric types. It's not against the grain to say that in the past, it was a grounded electric type. So... Yeah. 6 out of 10. I said I prefer Great Tusk to Iron Shreds, but I like this design. I like the steel typing added to a future Dawn fan. And it does have some good things going for it, especially Heavy Slam. 7 out of 10. They managed to break Deli Bird. They managed to do it. Santa Claus is broken. And in all fairness, it makes people like us want to believe in the jolly old fat man again. 8 out of 10. Really the worst Paradox Pokemon out there. Why Iron Hands needed to be created 
is beyond me. I don't get it. Slapping the electric and fighting type on it again. They should have at least let Palm me so evolution line be the first, even though we've had that discussion. This doesn't hit it for me. Three out of ten. This Hydragon, however, I like it a lot. Hydragon was already good enough in my book, but I like this one just as much. Eight out of ten. I get where they're coming from on this, on Volcarona being a fire and poison type in the future, because it essentially is saying the sunlight, it's basically a reference to melanoma. Too much sunlight will poison you. And they did a real good job at it. 8 out of 10. They tried to make Tyranitar look more like Godzilla, or at least Mecha Godzilla, but they did it with Duraludon in Generation 8, and they did it much better, in my opinion. This Pokemon, 6 out of 10. Frigibax as the baby of the pseudo family. I thought it was cute. It's alright. 6 out of 10. I really like its evolution, Arctobax. It really starts getting better. And I think that being able to put a Spinosaurus in as a pseudo-legendary is really cool. 7 out of 10. Final Evolution back Excalibur, absolutely great. Love its design. Love that ability. Love its signature move. 10 out of 10. Beautiful design for a pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Your fun... You're annoying to get all of your coins, but you're derpy. I like you. Six out of ten. I love Gold Dango. I absolutely love it. Best Pokemon out in Paldea. Do not at me. This thing breaks the scale. Eleven out of ten. The Ruined Pokemon, starting with Wochin... I mean, it's a snail with leaves, and it's okay. Six out of ten. A saber-toothed tiger with swords as the sabers. Sheen Pao is my favorite of this quartet. Really good design, Pokemon. Nine out of ten. Ting Lu, I like the moose motif. I really do. And they really did a good job at it. So, 7 out of 10. A Fire Goldfish. Didn't really have both of those going on my bingo card. But Chayu is cute. And apparently it is hotter than 5,000 degrees. So, I do not want to touch it. But I like it. 7 out of 10. Well, Roaring Moon is there. <laughs> Uh, whew. so they made a prehistoric Mega Salamence. Yeah, that's what they did. And they did a good job at it. 9 out of 10. Iron Valiant? Best of the entire Paradox Pokemon. Love the hype, love the combination of Gardevoir and Gallade. They did it phenomenally here. 10 out of 10. I prefer Coridon over Maridon, but that is because I played Scarlet. And I love its... I mean, I love both their stories. Their stories are going to be the same. Just one's Coridon, one's Maridon. And in the story uh, with Path of Legends, when it gives that derpy face, I love it. 10 out of 10. I said I prefer Coridon to Maridon, but in all fairness... It's still a good design. I like the futuristic side of things. I give it a 9 out of 10. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my rankings of every single new Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Which ones did you agree with and which ones did you disagree with? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's try to reach 10 likes on this video. It's a stupid goal, but let's try it. And if you're new to this content and you want to see more, Feel free to subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, and let's try to get to 300 Talonites as soon as possible, or just whenever, really, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I love the support you guys have given me over the last two years. Can only keep getting better because of you. 
and I will see you guys next time.